Yo, what is up? It is your boys that are back with a brand new video. Now, as you can see from the title, this is going to be What If Deku Was Cabal? This is also going to be a collaboration with my boy, The Crown Clown. He makes his own uh, What If content on his own channel. And I hope you guys, after hearing his part on this What If, I hope you guys end up going over there and showing him some love, you know? Make sure you let him know that Zether sent you over there. And uh, that being said, if this collab does well, you know, we might do some other ones in the future. But that being said, Crown thank you man but uh also forgot to mention this is also gonna be the 2k special so thank you thank you thank you so much guys for the for the amazing support that i've been getting so far on my channel like i have been blowing up lately and it's all thanks to you guys and i promise to keep pumping out amazing content every single day but with that being said let's go ahead and um officially get started okay guys so the way that this what if will start working so Things will change a little bit. In this, what if Deku's age will actually be gone up by about three years? So in this version, when uh, when Bakugo is uh, you know in preschool and getting his quirk, uh, Deku would have actually when Deku's in preschool, he won't have Bakugo around. There won't be no Bakugo. Instead, he's gonna be having a different kid who ends up bullying him in in the same way that Bakugo does. Name being Ren Yuki. During the first couple years after Deku was you know announced as quirkless. He would actually end up bullying Deku. Now, this kid would actually end up having a very... Let's go with... He would have a very, you know, very decent fire quirk. His quirk would basically be fire manipulation. And he would have a very strong grasp on it. Now, Deku would actually end up getting burned from him when he's a kid. And that Ren Yuki kid would definitely end up harassing Deku when he's growing up. Lots of times he would burn his he would burn his assignments before they got into class. He would burn his lunch so Deku wouldn't have anything to eat and a lot of times Deku would go home with burn marks on his skin. His mom would always ask him what's going on but Deku would refuse to tell her who's doing it. Now along the way she would actually find out who it is and it'd be known that Ren Yuki is bullying Deku. Now the teachers as well as the students would actually be aware of this but nobody would care. I mean Deku's quirkless after all. And that's pretty much how his couple of first, you know, middle school. Oh, no, sorry, not middle school. His uh, first couple, you know, elementary years will be. During those times, Ren would basically have the rest of the class gang up against Deku. And the reason they do it isn't because they also believe that Deku's, you know, a, a quirkless loser. Because that's how Bakugo was. I mean, he did definitely bully Deku, but I don't think it's to the point where this original character, Ren Yuki, is doing it. This guy right here would do it to the point where he would actually end up bullying everybody else he would do that to everybody and be way more of a dick to deku in this version the kids would actually do things to deku because they're scared that he would do the things to them too so they would always hop on his side and never ever end up giving deku a chance to you know be himself or just leave him alone during the years he definitely would have marked up deku with a lot of burn scars and things that will just never go away It'll never be nothing too, too crazy to the point of the thumbnail, though. But it'll definitely be, like, on his shirt. And he'll have some burnt clothes and things like that. One time, however, when Deku was in middle school, I think this is... No, no, no. Why did I say I think? I'm deciding. <laughs> Deku will be about 13 years old. When his mother will basically get tired of this. She'll report to that school and begin to tell the principal that if they don't stop that kid from bullying Izuku, she is going to sue him for everything and make sure he gets thrown in jail. So the principal would basically decide to go up to Renyuki as he then tells him that if he doesn't stop, he's going to be expelled. As He would basically get angered by this and would do something much, much worse to Deku. On this particular day, he would actually take Deku with a couple of his lackeys and would actually end up drowning him by the river that Bakugo had fallen in when he was a kid. Now, he would not end up killing Deku, but he would get pretty close to it. After this, Deku would get out of the water going... <gasps> as he's like... And the next time you snitch on me, it'll go a lot worse for you, Deku. As Deku gets up and says, I didn't! As he punches him in the face, knocking him out, leaving him there just knocked out as Deku just is in a very critical condition. Deku, after this, would decide that enough is enough. And he would decide that he's gonna, he's done being the target of everyone's jokes. He's done living the way that he has and being ostracized for being quirkless. If, P if normal society won't want him, then he'll turn to villainy. This is when Deku would decide that enough is enough and would basically go on the dark web, you could say, when he starts looking up gangs online. Just anything that he can go to to feel, you know, accepted. 
when out of nowhere he finds out about a black market or a gang known as the Black Dragons. Deku will immediately be, you know, caught, caught, they will catch his interest immediately. As Deku would see that they mainly sell illegal things, so Deku would decide that maybe he can get in there using his intellect. As Deku would decide that he's going to find them and try to join them. Deku would spend the next two weeks looking for the Black Dragons, and at this point, Deku will actually be about 14 years old. Yes, 14 years old. Deku would have spent a while looking for them. Now, if that doesn't match up, then uh, just scratch what I said before and like make him be 14, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, anyways, Deku would be 14 years old at this point, when uh, Deku would actually end up finding one of their Black Dragon locations, I guess you could say. On this particular day, Kano would actually be there, and Deku would decide that he's going to, you know go over there so Deku would arrive to the Black Dragon's base of operations as he then says hey uh are you as Kano would look at him and say hey Mike as Deku would proceed to say is your name uh Kano as Kano would look at him and say and what if I am as Deku would say I I want to join the Black Dragons as Kano would begin to laugh and pop a cigarette in his mouth as he then says you join the Black Dragons kid get out of here before you get hurt as Deku would then say I can be a valuable asset I can help you guys with your marketing as well as you know carrying missions for you guys as Kano would just look at him and be like what help would that do for me as Deku would say I could probably multiply your your revenue and your money as Kano would stop for a second as he then says you'd have to prove it to me kid as Deku would say well, I noticed that your stocks, I guess you could say, or the people that you sell things to are more underground people. And he would begin to say that maybe they could create a fake name, I guess you could say, as, and sell to more known people so that they, their revenue or their income would actually double. As Kano would hear him out and, De and Kano would be like, tell you what, kid, you come in and you do your thing. And if you can help us out in the next four months, I'll let you come into the Black Dragons. Deck would say... Thank you, as he would basically proceed to walk out, and Kano would basically get him set up with his little, with the computer, and uh, Deku would get to work immediately. He would spend the next two months gaining a little bit of a following and creating the new, new and improved Black Dragon, you know, Dark Market that will be named a different name, but it will be owned by the Black Dragons after all. So, Deku would decide that uh, he's gonna make this go public, and as soon as it does, the very next day it would blow up they would have many new customers and it would be a sort of overnight success their revenue would or income i guess you could say would basically double as deku would basically end up getting on kano's good side now after these four months and of hanging out with the wrong crowd deku's grades would have definitely plummeted to the ground as deku tells kano about it and kano would decide and and tell deku that he'll take care of it as deku would be like really as kano would say that he has nothing to worry about he just needs to keep doing what he's doing as Deku would look at him and say, understood. Deku would continue doing what he's doing. And in terms of what Deku's situation, Kano would decide that he's going to have a couple of his black dragons go threaten his teachers. And, you know, give them a little bit of an incentive to let Deku pass, I guess you could say. The very next day, Deku would look at his grades and he would have all A's. Every single one of his teachers would have been threatened with killing their families. And all of them would have decided that they're not gonna you know risk it when they can just give this kid a passing grade and just get over with it as Deku would proceed to you know tell his parents that he's going to school when in reality he would be reporting to the black dragon's base one of them at least as during these couple of years that Deku's gonna spend with them their operation is definitely gonna grow grow in numbers and just become a more bigger uh thing as you know it so during this time Deku would of course learn how to fight because about one year will pass up to this point. Deku would have actually been, you know, been trained by Kano a little bit. And his fighting style will never be martial arts style. He'll be more of a street brawler, having gained a little bit more muscle mass since Kano told him that if he wants to stick around, he better he better be able to defend himself. As Deku would be put on his first mission around the first year that he's there. As Deku would actually end up going on a mission just to kill somebody who had, you know, done the Black Dragons wrong and not paid them what they had agreed on. As Deku would arrive there with a couple of other Black Dragon members and basically ended up tortured the man to death. 
they would end up killing him and that would be Deku's first kill. For the next couple of missions, they'd be nothing but killing people who didn't pay the full price or, you know, killing people who are taking their stuff and selling them back or taking down other small operations just like theirs to make sure that they don't grow before his does, aka the Black Dragons. Deku would actually get his uh, little uh, hook swords, I guess you could say, his... Uh, What's the word that you say when somebody has like something that like it's their go to or his his trait his like I don't know. But basically Deck would actually end up getting his cook swords early, meaning he'll get started on this cabal thing very, very soon. Deku about this time would have uh, basically continued doing these missions for about one more year. At this point, Deck would have joined at the age of 14 and after two years, he'd be 17 at this point. No, wait, no, I'm dumb. 16 at this point. Now, this is when Deku would have actually ended up going on a mission with Kano, since at this point, Deku had definitely climbed up the ranks after doing all the missions and doing everything that he has done for the Black Dragons, as Kano would view Deku as an asset, you know? During the years, Deku would have definitely climbed the ranks, like I said, becoming 10th in command with the Black Dragons definitely, definitely growing in ranks. In terms of the mission that Deku would actually end up going with Kano, it would be a mission to take out an operation of gang members, I guess you could say, that were basically trying to take down the Black Dragons. It'd be nothing but Kano, Deku, and Tan Tamaki, uh, uh, Yuro, Yuri, and Yuri, I guess. Yeah, Yuri. They're all three of them basically ended up, you know, blending in with uh, with the other organization as they. During the time that everybody least expected it, they would have dropped bombs, killing multiple members of their squad, as they ended up fighting the rest and taking them all down. Them all being very powerful, quirked superhumans, as Deku and Kano are actually quirkless. Yes, you heard that right. They're both quirkless. And in terms of, uh, what was the other guy's name? I forget. In terms of that guy, he would actually end up having a water quirk, a really cool one at that. They would have actually ended up slaughtering all of the members of the opposing gang that they would have been, uh, you know, having a little bit of problems with, you could say. During the during the next year or months, you could say, Deck would actually end up going on more missions, climbing the ranks even faster, becoming fourth in command, with the Black Dragons being a large organization that has many, many bases. At this point, Deck would definitely be built just like Kano at the age of 17, and he would definitely be a total badass. And of course, he would have definitely have gotten revenge on his childhood bully. Let's go ahead and get into that. During the age of 16, when he was about to turn 17, Deck would tell Kano all about his past as Kano would begin to chuckle and say, <laughs> and you're never going to do anything about it? As Deck would say, I mean, he's in UA. I haven't heard of him since, you know, since we uh, got out of middle school. As Kano would just laugh and say, tell you what, kid. As a thanks for everything you've done for us, I'll help you get rid of that little Ryuk kid. <laughs> As he then laughs with Deku, and Deku just smiles, thinking, finally. This is when Deku, as well as the Black Dragons, would kidnap that student from UA as they take him into a little torture chamber, you could see. And Deku would spend the next month or two torturing this kid, and he would have been reported as missing. After about two months, he would have been reported dead and all hope for finding him would have been lost. During the time that Deku would actually end up torturing him, he would tell him if he remembers the way that he would do things like this to Deku. As he would scream in agony and apologize for all the things that he had done before. But Deku would tell him that if those that if those sorries can take away the scars that he has permanently on his body, he'll let him go. As the kid would just scream and plead for his life as Deku would just have his fun torturing the boy, telling him that this is exactly how he felt. As he just laughs when I clean his face and for the day of his death, he would stab the hook swords into his head and lift him up with nothing but his bare physical strength and slam him back down as he kills him on, on impact. That would be one of his most special, I guess you could say, to his heart kills. After this, Deck would actually be sent on a different mission. It'd be a setup mission, sadly. Deck would actually end up going with this mission with a man known as Stryker in the game. 
as Declan Stryker would actually be very high in terms of ranks. Stryker would be about in the sixth position as Declan Stryker would be the only ones who would go to this. It would be a very small organization with very, very powerful quirk users. When they arrived, they would have people like Muscular would be there. Yes, Muscular would be there. People like Muscular and, you know, other very, very crooked villains would be there as they had make a fake organization to try to take down a couple of the Black Dragon members for kicks, for nothing but fun. As Deku and Stryker would arrive and Stryker having a sort of gun quirk would basically arrive as he basically tries to take down a couple of the members but Deku and Stryker would learn that they're quickly going to become over overwhelmed as in a matter of seconds they would begin to overrun them as Deku and Stryker it seems that all hope is lost and they're about to die when suddenly Stryker begins to shoot everywhere as he just says Deku you gotta leave or no Izuku you gotta get out of here. As Deku would say, I, I'm not leaving. As Stryker would say, go! As Deku would run out, just angered by what had happened and how those petty thieves would actually end up getting away with murdering Stryker. After this, Deku would have a big, that would have a big, big impact on Deku's moral and the way that he views his Black Dragon organization, I guess you could say. After surviving by having his friends sacrifice his life for him, decide that the black dragons it just it just wasn't for him this is when Deku would proceed to not report to the black dragons base for the next two weeks as Kano finds that it's a little odd all things would be normal for about two weeks and Deku would go back to being a normal kid <laughs> a badass you as well as a badass as Deku would take his sword hooks as well as his uh you know outfit that he used to wear with him and just hide it away as he would just proceed to be normal one day, however, when Deku was coming home from school, he would find both of his parents dead, with blood all over the wall saying that, you don't leave the Black Dragons. After seeing this, Deku would get enraged and think of nothing but revenge. As soon as Deku sees this, he would begin to fall on his knees as he's then filled with nothing but anger as he beats on the floor and says, I'll kill you, Kano. I'll, I'll kill all of you. As he then grabs both of his hook swords as well as his outfit and puts on a mask as he then runs not the not the cabal one by the way it would just be a random one as he runs into one of the lesser known black dragon bases as he runs in there and begins to ravage on the black dragon members at this point deck would have actually ended up killing about 23 stabbing his cook swords into people's heads and beating on their heads as he just killed them all these black dragon members would definitely be weaker ones as deck would have actually ended up taking them out very easily this one after he had killed about the 23rd member. Kano would walk in clapping saying, Well, 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 <laughs> what do we have here? Izuku, what you what are you doing back here? As Izuku would say, I'm here to I'm here to I'm here to destroy the black dragons. As Kano would begin to laugh and say, <laughs> That's funny, kid. You basically made us. As Deku would say, Yeah, and I'm gonna end you. As Kano would just laugh in his face as he then begins to throw a sweeping kick at Deku that knocks him down to the floor. As Kano then holds a knife to Deku's throat as he then says, And you came all by yourself to try to take me on? Come on, kid, I taught you everything you knew. As Deku would basically stare at Kano's eyes with nothing but rage. As he then tries to take Kano off him, but Kano would say, <laughs> Well, it was fun while it lasted, kid. I guess I'm going to give you a little bit of a easy death. As he begins to laugh and say, <laughs> as he then hits Deku on the head, knocking him out. And when Deku wakes up, he would wake up over a bat of chemicals. Now when Deku sees what's around him, he would begin to shake as his mouth is covered and try to scream for help. As he then says, where, where am I? As Kano would, as a voice message of Kano would just blast through some speakers that would be around and say, hey, if you're up at this point, I just hope you know that you brought this upon yourself. Nobody leaves the black dragons. You know this, Suzuku. As Deku would proceed to kind of try to get out, as he then decides that the best option of escaping would be to wait till this thing gets loosened, or he drops and he can try to break out of it, or hold on to it with nothing but his his uh, arms, I guess you could say, his tied up arms or his legs. He would just try to think of anything at all that he could use to survive this, or maybe maybe swing his way out of the bat of chemicals. This one, Kano would go on a little bit of a monologue telling him that, hell, he should have stayed with the Black Dragons. They could have 
they could have become the most powerful people in all of Japan. As Deku would just get angered hearing everything that Kano's saying. And, and then Kano begins to tell Deku about how he slowly murdered his parents and he did that himself. As Deku would begin to go, just trying to yell out and just say, fuck you. But his mouth is tied, so he can't do that right now. This is when Deku would proceed to just get angered as out of nowhere, his eyes would widen and he would hear K Kano say bye bye. As Deku would drop into the bat, screaming as the chain would begin to melt instantly as well as all of his clothes. As Deku threw nothing but sheer will, would begin to claw his way out or try to get out of the chemicals. As Deku would fall in and these chemicals would have killed any normal human, yes. But these chemicals would have been what gave Deku his powers. Now as Deku would begin to try to climb out, Deku would do it in about a second. Before he knew it, he would basically speed blitz out of there, barely surviving, having his skin look exactly like what Cabal's does in the thumbnail. As Deku just falls on the ground, <laughs> breathing loud, as he says, <coughs> as he's damn near dead, as he then tries to crawl out, out of there looking for help, he makes it outside of an alleyway, but as soon as he crawls out of there, he'd pass out immediately. Now, as this is happening, this is when he, uh, somebody would walk by as, or be passing by as he would see Deku, his damn near dead body, as this person would begin to grab Deku as he then patches him up because, you know, it's a guy with fifth degree burns, I guess you could say, and he's not looking all too well. As he would use a little bit of tech, you could say the same thing that Kano had used in his uh, in the Mortal Kombat 9 game to heal Deku. As Deku would open his eyes and go to attack instantly, as Stain, yes, this being Stain, the person who healed him and took him, would be Stain. Stain would hold the knife to his throat as, as he then, as Deku just stays still and, and Stain then knocks him back out. Deku would wake up in about an hour as Stain would just be looking at him as he says, How do you know how to fight so well? As Deku would not answer, as Stain would say, It's fine, don't answer. Just remember that you're tied up right now. As Deku would look, look at him at a situation, seeing that he's tied down, and Deku, after a little while of thinking, would decide that he's not in control, deciding that his only option of escaping or you know, getting out of here alive would probably be to tell this man what he's looking for. And Stain would begin to ask him what happened. And Deku would proceed to tell him everything about how the Black Dragons had basically sent him on a suicide mission in which Deku had almost died in. He had been, you know, saved by Stryker. As Deku would then think back on everything and he would say that he ended up leaving. As the Black Dragons ended up slaughtering his family, and Deku went out for revenge, but that he was taken out by Kano, the leader. One who he had thought was like an older brother to him. As he was hanged over some bat of chemicals and thrown in there, but he survived this Stain's eyes would widen, wondering how the hell he survived it. As Deku would tell him that he's not too sure himself. As Stain would understand what's going on. And he would then offer him some help. But he would have to get some help in return. This one, Stan would propose the offer of Deku helping him take out fake heroes. His normal goal that he had in canon, with Deku, with Stain telling him that if he helps him do that, he'll help him take down the Black Dragon organization. As as Deku then smiles and says, "Well, I don't think I'm in any condition to do that." As Deku would then think about it a little bit, being hesitant at first, but would end up agreeing. This is when Deku would actually end up getting his signature mask as well as his his hook swords. Getting the entire outfit that you guys see in the thumbnail now. He would look exactly like that with the long hair since during this in this time now, in this timeline, sorry, in this timeline, Deku would have actually ended up getting the hook swords. It'd be a little bit of a, you know, his trademark. As Deku would look at Stain and Stain would say, Well, you gotta get recovered. As Deku would have a smile going down his face, as he says, looks like it. And this is where my part is going to be ending. Very soon, you guys are going to be hearing from the Crown Clown. I hope you guys enjoy his part. 
But that being said, I'll hit, I'll I'll be talking to you guys in about 40 minutes, give or take. But uh, yeah, that being said, I'll be back. All right, Zother, thank you for that introduction. And, you know, I'm the Crown Clown. And yeah, link to my channel, I'm assuming, will be down in the description. But for now, let's pick it up where Zother left off. Now, with Stain having Deku there, all beat up and telling him that he needed to get recovered, Deku and Stain would actually take about a year. Deku's burns would hinder his movements a lot. So, Stain would actually have to retrain Deku a little bit and actually get him to where his, you know, skin isn't hurting him as much. So, Deku would be taking painkillers regularly for a good few months until he's gotten used to the pain. So, during that time, Deku would actually realize that his original fighting style had a lot of wasted movements and openings. Stain's training would help refine him to the point to where any move he makes would not be wasted, as well as figuring out his super speed and his plasma blast. And with that out of the way, you know, Deku would actually be very comfortable with Stain. Even though he's not able to fully control his speed, because it's something new, he hasn't had it for a good part of his life so it'll only be like 30 percent for right now but he can use a hundred percent of his plasma blast so during this time Deku and Stain would be out looking for random heroes as Stain would use this as kind of like a test for Deku as Stain would I you know explain his ideology to Deku Deku hearing someone else's take on ideals would actually be refreshing to him. He would actually be a lot more open to these ideals, seeing as how if there was such a thing as true heroes, then why is his parents dead? Why didn't they stop Kana? And why didn't they protect everyone else? Especially, why didn't they come and try to stop the mission? Where were the heroes? Striker could still be alive if it wasn't for them. As Deku would just be bitter. He'd be angry at all the heroes. And Stan would tell him after they get done killing the first hero in the alleyway, you need to take up a name. You can't keep using Izuku Midoriya. As Deku would say, yeah, I already thought about a name. As Stan would say, go ahead, let me hear it. I'll tell you if it's good or not. As Deku would say, yeah, well, you know, Stain isn't really the best name either. As Stain would say yes, but it sends a message. So Deku would say, my name will be Cabal. And Stain would say, Cabal, huh? I like that. So the new headlines all throughout Japan would be called the hero killers Stain and Cabal. As Pro heroes would be a lot more terrified to go out at night, as they would fear two hero, hero killers, not just one. As they would be kind of, you know, teaming up this time, the heroes anyway, but it still wouldn't save them. All throughout the time that Deku and Stain would train together, they would kill about 11 heroes but they would also help Deku get his revenge and try to track down Kano, the man responsible for his current situation and everything. And they would start out with small operations. They would go to where Deku knew some small bases were of the Black Dragons. And he, they'd take about three of them out at, at this time. And yeah, Deku and Stan would actually have a good relationship going, as Stain would actually make sure to take care of Deku and not to put him in overly dangerous situations. But Deku would keep pushing himself harder and harder, training himself and honing his skills and his killer's instinct. As he would honestly agree with Stain on all of his ideals, 
at this point. He wouldn't just be thinking about them and doing things just to get back at the Black Dragons. No, he would actually believe in taking out both villains and false heroes. People that couldn't become righteous and the people that would seek vengeance and exploit the weak. As Deku would actually be a lot more of a hardened killer. And at this time, we'd be at the sports festival. And during the sports festival's time, where most of the pro heroes and the population is at, it would be time for Ingenium. As they would come across Ingenium in an alleyway, as Deku and Stain would actually begin to fight. Ingenium would actually put up a pretty good fight against Stain, but when Deku joined in, it wouldn't be too long before Ingenium got hurt. As Ingenium would actually use his Respiro Burst to kick Stain in the stomach, and Deku would actually use his Plasma Blast and blast Ingenium in the back, stunning him just enough for Stain to cut him, and Deku would hit him with the Hook Sword, tearing off one of his legs. As Ingenium would scream out in pain, Stain would stab right through him. This time, they would kill Ingenium. So whenever the call comes for Ida, then it's a lot more, you know, saddening. And Ida gets a lot more angry and a lot more determined. And at this time, they would be on the move. Since they just took out a high priority target, they would actually be moving across Japan to try and, you know, get away from the heat. So they would go further into Hosu City. As they would be seeing another low level hero. Someone that wouldn't draw too much attention. As this time Stain, he kept back. He said, this one's easy enough. He's yours. Take him out. As Deku would say, understood. As he jumped down, grab his hook sword, his signature weapon. As he would blitz him at top speed and slash his head off. In one fluid motion, stopping and showing Stain the head still on the edge of his hook sword. As Stain would be pleased with Deku, he would say, Alright, come back up here. As Deku would move very quickly all the way up and would rejoin Stain in time to see Shigaraki stepping out of a portal. And he would actually be interested to meet both Stain and Cabal. As Shigaraki would start the meeting and basically they would say that they would like for them both to come work for them to take out Hero Society. And Stain would say, okay, but how many heroes are we taking out? As Shigaraki would say, all of them, even All Might, especially All Might. The symbol of peace has to die. After all, we can't have him running around and reforming hero society, bringing it back to the forefront. No, we need All Might dead. As Stain would say, All Might's the only true hero. I don't kill innocents, and I don't kill the people who are truly trying to make the world better for selfless reasons. As Deku would say, I agree. That would make us no better than a mercenaries. As Shigaraki said, but who's to say All Might's doing it for righteous reasons? As Stain would begin to tell him, you need to shut your fucking mouth. All Might's the only one doing this thing right and not seeking credit. He's not seeking media attention. He's doing it because he wants to and because it's the right thing to do. That's it. That makes him a righteous hero. All these other heroes going out here, parading around, saying that, oh, they're all here for the people. The truth is, they're only in it for the money. They're only in it for the fame. They want the attention. They want everybody to know, yeah, I saved that person. Give me the credit. All of that. As Deku would say, as for the villains, you're just as bad as the Black Dragon, if not worse. We heard about what you did at the USJ. 
attacking those kids? Come on now. Where's your sense of honor? Where's your sense of a fair fight? As Shigaraki would say, I see this is going nowhere. Ah, Kirigiri, get rid of them. They're an eyesore. As Kirigiri would just say, now let's try to be reasonable. As Deku and Stain would draw their weapons, as Shigaraki says, well, I guess it's a fight they want. As pretty much he would go to grab Stain, Deku would actually slice Shigaraki's arm a little bit. And basically, Kirigiri would warp gate them back to where they were, and Shigaraki would tend to his wound. As Stain would say, thanks for the assist. And it seems like you have taken up my ideals. I'm proud. You've changed a lot. As Deku would say, really, I don't see how. I still kill people. And I'm just doing this for revenge. As Stain says, no you're not. I can tell you actually believe in my ideals. You believe that there can be a better world. As soon as all these false heroes are out of here, then only the noble ones will remain. And they will surely invigorate this world into a peaceful one. As Deku says, I'm not sure you're right about that, but it's worth fighting for. As Stain would say, yeah. So, yeah, Shigaraki would be pissed. As soon as you know, he gets his wound healed, he would actually say, you know what? Let's release the Nomu. Let's teach those cocksuckers a lesson. And at this time, Stain and Cabal, aka Deku, would actually be running from rooftop to rooftop as they see the hero native down there chilling on, you know, company time, taking a smoke on the phone, laughing it up. And native would jump on down. Well, not native, but Stain and Deku would jump on down as they would catch Native off guard, and Stain would actually cut him. And at that point in time, Ida would see Stain and Cabal. Being infuriated, he wouldn't even call for backup. But luckily, someone's nearby. Two people, to be exact. As Ida tries to rush towards Stain, Deku would actually hit him with a plasma blast burning through some of his hero attire and he would be on the ground as Stain would stab him in the back pulling his sword out licking his blood and paralyzing him as Ida would lay there helpless Deku would stomp Ida's head into the ground with his boot on top of it saying look at you you remind me of someone what was his name as Ida would say Ingenium is the name of a hero the man you two killed. He was my older brother. As Deku would say, he was in our way. And Stain would say, all false heroes get taken out. You could have just stopped right then and there, took that injured man and ran off, but you didn't. Instead, you put your own personal feelings first and look where that got you about to be butchered but right then a giant flame would come out of nowhere nearly burning cabal and stain as they jump back and they look and it's endeavor and his son shoto todoroki as endeavor would tell todoroki get your classmate and get out of here you're not allowed to really fight so i'll take care of these two and Todoroki would say, I'll be back with backup. As pretty much, he would grab Ida and run as fast as he could. As Endeavor would just throw Native right out of that alley. As Native would yell for help, help. As more heroes would be rushing. Stain and Cabal knew their time was limited. But it was Endeavor. Somebody who's priority target number one. And Endeavor says, there's no way you two are escaping. 
as Deku would say, escape? And Stain would finish his sentence. Whoever said we wanted to escape? As they would stare Endeavor down. And Deku would say, you're the most false hero of them all. As Stain would say, somebody who's as self-righteous as you clearly isn't a hero for any positive means or any selfless ones either. So, how about we begin the butchering? As Endeavor said, the only two that'll be butchered is you guys. As he burns bright. So, Stain lunges, avoiding his flames as Deku runs alongside of the wall, kicking Endeavor in the head. Right then, Stain would chop at Endeavor's leg, nicking him, but Endeavor would engulf the flames, burning away the blood on Stain's sword. As the fight continued, Endeavor would actually be putting out a lot more fire and would be drawing everyone's attention. So, what does Deku do? He blitzes Endeavor, slashing into his stomach with his hook sword and opening a wound. As Endeavor would scream in pain, he would have a furious flame burn out as it would catch on Deku's hook sword. Deku would drop it and use his other one and his plasma blast. He would blast Endeavor right in the face, causing blood to trickle down. While Endeavor was only focused on Cabal, he would notice Stain up on top of the fire escape as he would jump down and stab Endeavor right through the throat, killing him. As Endeavor would drop to the floor, Deku would, you know, rinse off his hook sword in a puddle that's nearby. As a lot of the heroes get there, they'd see that Endeavor was actually just killed. At that point, the heroes would charge in the alley, but not before too long, there would be a ton of Nomu overrunning the city. It wouldn't just be the heroes versus Stain and Cabal, it would be the Nomus as well. As Deku would fight through the heroes and Stain would fight through the Nomu. However, one Nomu actually got a good hit in on Stain. Since the Nomu don't really work by themselves, but they are very proficient in working in teams, Stain would get beaten to a pulp, incurring fatal injuries. As he would see Deku fighting, he would see the pain on him from people tearing at his burnt flesh. He would be screaming out in pain as he would pick up his hook swords and swing them around, slaughtering a good bit of heroes. They would realize it's too dangerous to be close to this guy, as Deku would blitz over there, seeing his friend on death's door. He would be enraged as he would slash through the Nomu's neck, decapitating it, ripping it off, as he would fight anyone and everyone around him, trying to let Stain recover. But Stain, he knows he's not going to make it out of this alive. So he grabs Deku by the shoulder and tells him, Run. It'll be alright. That might kill me. But my message will live on in you. You were the only friend I've ever had. So run with the wind, Cabal. As Deku would actually get a little bit teary-eyed, he would say, Stain, I can't leave you. Not again. I'm not doing this like Striker. I'm stronger now. I can help you. As Stain would tell him, No. There's too many. Just like your friend Striker, I am will too give my life to protect you. After all, my message can only live on in you, the one person I trained. Many more will flock to you, I'm sure. I will give this world my dying message and inspire others so you'll never be alone. But train them like I've trained you. Deku hearing this, as Stain would go berserk, 
slashing at everyone, Hiro, Nomu, it didn't matter. If they were near, they were getting cut. As Deku would run, he would blitz at top speed, running out of Hosu City. As Stain would scream, the only one who can kill me is All Might. You false heroes, go to hell! As he would be impaled by the Nomu, killing him. And that was being filmed on national TV. As before his body hit the floor, the last words he would speak as he would scream, Live Cabal! As he would fall to the ground, dead. As the world was watching that, it was live streamed all over the country. People would rise up. They would listen to Stain's dying message. They would agree with it. And he would seek people out. More people would be looking for Cabal. But after this, Deku's exhaustion, he lays in an alley covered up in the darkness as he would wait as he would look on his phone, as he would try to search the dark web for a doctor, any doctor that could fix his skin so it wouldn't be a hindrance to him anymore, as he would find one. He would say, it's time, time to heal this wound, as he would get up and run. He would knock down the doctor's door and say, I need you to fix me. Money's not a problem. Trust me. As the doctor would say, of course. You're a cabal, aren't you? As Deku would say, yes. And the doctor says, what seems to be the problem then? Deku would say, I need these burns healed. The doctor would tell him, I'm not sure if it's possible, but I'll do my best. Lie down. And oh, there's no charge. After all, carrying out Stain's will is what I should be doing. As he puts Deku under anesthesia, as Deku falls back, closing his eyes, as the doctor goes to work, healing his skin, Deku would think back on the memories of Stain going through there, their time training, how Stain never judged him for his past, how Stain accepted him, even with his terribly burnt skin. And with everything that's happened, Deku realizes Stain was only his best friend. Not his teacher, not his accomplice, but a friend. Someone that was there for him. Didn't judge him, none of that. As Deku would come, through to the next day, he would realize his skin, it's fully healed, back to 100%, no pain, no laceration, no burns, he's happy, as he would see this as being symbolic, Stain found him when his own choices led to his destruction and his skin was terribly burnt, and when he left Stain, he was healed. Completely, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Deku would think that it's time to train. Without the pain holding him back anymore, he should be able to go back to 100%. So, he would actually go off to do some training in the forest where he'd be alone. And he would actually get a lot of training in. His speed control would actually increase a lot. He would go from about 30% to 70%. And he would say, okay, time to do some recon. The Black Dragons, they've had way too little bloodshed. It's about time their numbers get thinned. So he would do some recon and he would realize the Black Dragons, they're actually meeting with the League of Villains. 
as Deku would say that this is not something he could be able to take out on his own. The Black Dragon by themselves would be a problem. But now with the League of Villain, he would realize he needs some help. So, what does he do? He decides to follow Stain's message, as the doctor would call him up and say he has a contact that could find him some good recruits, about three of them. Deku would say, very well, put him in contact with me. As Deku would hang up the phone, and a moment later, the contact would call him. As Deku would answer the phone and would say, so, I hear you got three people for me. And the guy would say, depends. Do you have the cash? Deku would say, money's no problem. As he would have quite a bit of money from hitting those bases with Stain. Since there was a lot of cash being held there by the Black Dragons, Deku would take it and that's what he was supporting him and Stain on. So... The info broker would actually say, all right, payment received. The names of these people, they follow Stain's ideals completely. The first one's name is Dobby. It's a bit of an alias, but he doesn't really want to tell his name. Deck would say, that's fine. Put him in contact with me. He says, all right, I will. The second one's a bit of a crazy case. Her name is Toga Himiko. And, well, you'll just have to meet her to see what her ordeal is. As Deku would say, I'm pretty sure it won't be a problem. Put her in contact with me. And then he would say, the last one. It's a guy named Spinner. I don't know what real skills he has, but he chooses to follow Stain very closely. And, well... He's actually taken up his outfit. As Deku would say, you're definitely putting me in contact with that motherfucker. Not just anyone gets to wear Stain's gear. As the contact would say, all right then, they'll be in contact with you. Where should I give them the location? As Deku would send him the location of one of the old black dragon bases he took out. The, that's the base he's actually been using for his own base of operations as he would blitz back there and wait a few hours later he would see the first one a blonde haired girl in a school uniform with a knife Deku would say I propose you would be Toga right and she would see Deku lying there on the couch as she would say are you Cabal Deku would say, yeah. So tell me, what about Stain's message brought you here? As Toga would just say that she really liked his message and wants to have a world where everyone will accept her. And Deku says, easy enough to achieve. Anyway, you'll be training under me now. I won't have weaklings or half-assed combatants. Understood? As... She says, yeah, understood. As he would wait for a little bit longer, the next one would show up. A guy with stitches all over his body and two-toned skin. Deku would actually see this guy and would be like, I can relate to you. You're Dobby, correct? As Deku would just be getting up off the couch this time. As he would walk over there to him, Dobby would say, yeah, Got a problem? Deku would say no. I just understand the feeling and the look. As Dobby would look at Deku and see his skin all flawless, Dobby would say hard to understand as Deku would tell him he recently had his skin fully healed from fifth degree burns all over his body. As Dobby would say oh, so even down there, Deku would say that's none of your concern. But, what about Stain's message brought you here? As Dobby would say, 
that he really just wants the whole hero system to be reformed. Pieces of shit shouldn't be heroes. And he would say he's actually pretty thankful for them taking out Endeavor. He really didn't like that guy. As Deku would say, no problem. Welcome. As Dobby would say, very well, what do I call you? As Toka would say, yeah, what do we call you? Deku would just say, wait till the last member arrives. I don't want to repeat myself. As Spinner arrives, Deku sees him wearing Stain's outfit and weapons all over his body. He says, you must be Spinner. As Spinner would say, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet the guy who worked with Mr. Stain. So, where do I join? Deku would say, first off, why are you wearing Stain's gear? What, you think you can take his place now that he's dead? And Spinner would say, no, I would never, and Deku says, then you don't get to wear the outfit, not until you earned it. As Spinner would say, I understand. I'm sorry for my insolence. As Deku would say, very well, welcome aboard. As he would give Spinner a newer outfit to wear, just a prototype one, one of Stain's originals, but without the mask. As he would say, you guys will only address to me as Cabal. And from this point out, I'm training you. No ifs, ands, or buts. I'm not going to deal with liabilities in battle. Understood. As they say, understood. So, during the time that he's training his new members, getting ready for an all-out assault, the villains with the League would actually be launching their forest attack. Since the sports festival still happened, they would still be after Bakugo. And this time, the League of Villains members would have some Black Dragon people with them as well. And Muscular, since there's nobody there to save Kota, he would actually kill him. And the people that would still be with the League of Villains are Muscular, Mustard, Moonfish, Magma, Twice, and the Nomos. Along with, like, three of the higher up ranking members of the Black Dragon. A fight would ensue, and they wouldn't really lose a whole lot of members, since the Black Dragon's backup would be more like tactical special forces, which would be able to pinpoint and completely obliterate any hero attempts to subdue the villains, as they would actually capture both Bakugo and Tokiyami. And the heroes, they would start getting desperate, as they would have to show up, and they would break in, as Kano would actually have a few of his men help All For One and Shigaraki escape, which means Bakugo and Tokiyami do get taken back by the heroes, but the League of Villains don't get, kept, don't get captured at all, thanks to Kano's advanced prepping. And, well, that's it. All for my part. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, I'm the Ground Clown. And, I'll kick it back to Zother. Yes, sir. Just like Crown just said, make sure to go check out his socials as well as his YouTube channel. I'm going to be linking that down in the description. But with no further ado, let's get back into this amazing story. So just like Crown just previously established, Deck will proceed to train his brand new members being Dobby, Twice, and Toga. Oh, no, sorry, not Twice. Uh, Dobby, Spinner, and Toga. I messed that one up. <laughs> he would proceed to train them all in amplifying their quirk strength as well as teaching them how to refine their movements that they used to have wasted. As Deck would proceed to do this, he would think back on how Stain used to train him. The way that Stain would get things through to Deku's head and how fast he learned. He would have a little bit of a smile on his face as Dobby looks at him and says, Hey, would 
just smiling about as Deku says, just thinking about staying. As Dobby says, what was he like? As Deku then looks at him and says, he was a little bit of a nutshell, but he was an amazing guy. You know, he had goals and he and he sacrificed everything to achieve to achieve them. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna achieve his goals. We're gonna do everything that he was not able to. For Stain. As he then looks at Dobby who then smiles and says, for Stain. This is when we're gonna go ahead and cut the view to Kano's point of view. Now, as this is happening, Kano will actually be talking to some of his men as he then tells them to go off and just proceed to sell the merchandise as he then walks into the League of Villains organization. He walks past the members, that being Twice and Muscular and other such like that, as he then walks into Shigaraki's room with Kuro Giri being inside. As Kano will then say, Oi, Mike, Kuro Giri, I need you to get out of here. I, I, I want to have a talk with uh, Shigaraki. As Shigaraki would look at him and say, uh, Very well. And he'll then say, Kurogiri, get out of here. As Kano would then proceed to look at Shigaraki as he then says, What's next? And Shig says, What's next is that we're going to take out that pesky symbol of peace all mine. As well as capture, or no, 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 no. this would have been Absur, sorry. He would say, We need to finish off that pesky symbol of peace all mine. As well as take down the hero society as Kano would look at him and say and why the hell would we do that as Shigaraki says we need to get All Might to get out of the way so we can have more control over things as Kano would say you're not thinking of the bigger picture here without All Might he won't be able to take out the rest of the low life organizations and it'll leave more work for us the heroes are doing us favors they're like spiders killing off insects as Shigaraki says, you wouldn't understand. As K Kano just looks at him and says, you're right. Well, I guess I'll be going. As Shigaraki just turns around and Kano then looks at him quickly as he points his laser eye at him and shoots him straight in the head. As he gets a giant hole through his brain and his skull as his lifeless body just falls on the ground. This is when All For One will come in through the television that they have as he would begin to say, Shigaraki, are you? As he sees Shigaraki's lifeless body on the ground and Shigaraki would proceed to just lay there. As All For One looks at who did it and he then says, Oh, Kano, it was you. As he would then say, Not really gonna say I'm too fond of the way that you killed this guy, but... I like their, I like your way of getting to business. As All For One would then proceed to tell him, how about this? I'll offer you a deal. You're gonna be loyal to me. Do everything I tell you and in exchange. I'll grant you power. As Kano would look at him and say, how much are we talking here, old man? As All For One would chuckle and say, <laughs> I'll give you my quirk. As Kano would then widen his eyes as he then says, <laughs> That's a big offer. What do I have to do? As he would say, well, first of all, I need you to take care of the heroes as well as all mine. And I need you to be loyal to me and prove you're worthy of my quirk. As Kano would then look at him and say, <laughs> this is gonna be too easy. As he then thinks in his head that he's not about to obey some <laughs> old bastard who needs a breathing device to stay alive. As he then thinks that he's going to take out All For One himself and take his quirk by force. As Kano learning that he can take it would decide that he's definitely going to do that. This is when we have Kano. Uh, what's it called? Kano forming an army of black dragons as well as League of Villains members. Telling them all that Shigaraki's out. He's going to be their new leader. As none of them really care too much for that as they proceed to follow Stain's, or not, no, sorry, uh, Kano's command. As Kano would look at them and proceed to say, we're going to have a war on our hands, so you guys all need to get stronger. As he then proceeds to train a couple of them. During this time, the heroes would have actually been training themselves in the little uh, class 1A versus class 1B training joint. This is when we're going to go ahead and get into the manga, guys. So if you don't want to get spoilers, then I suggest you click off the video now. This is when uh, the heroes 
would realize that if the villains attack again, they're going to be at a major disadvantage. Losing Endeavor, as well as having All Might be on his last legs in terms of one for all percentages, with Mirio having a lot of repercussions because, yes, Mirio will be the brand new successor of one for all. Things definitely would have been taken a big t- turn since Mirio's old quirk could barely be controlled. Now he has one for all that enhances it. Talk about bad luck. Mirio was not in was not ready for all for one's amazing enhancement as his quirk would be two times harder to control as well as him trying to get a handle on one for all's percentages it would definitely be a little bit of a hassle for him so during this entire time mirio would proceed to train with that quirk realizing that he has to get to 100 percent as fast as possible up to this point mirio would only have about 40 percent and in terms of kano and the league of villains as well as uh, the black dragons Kano would decide that he's going to approach one of the big leaders in the game at the moment. That being Redestro. Now Redestro will actually get informed that the new leader of the League of Villains wants to meet with him. As Kano made up a phony lie telling him that he wants to take part in the Liberation Army. He'll offer his forces and money. But this is not going to be led by him. It's going to be led by both. It's going to be a collaboration. Just like me and Crow. <laughs> Anyways, this is when the Liberation Army leader, <clears throat> Redestro, would accept and have a little bit of a meeting with Kano. As they talk on the top of one of his towers, and the League of Villains men are down there talking with the members of the Liberation Army as they're just waiting for the moment to attack. As Kano's up there with Redestro, and Redestro looks at Kano as he then says, Well, how do you want to do this? As Kano then slips his leg and drops Redestro to the ground. As he then shoots his laser straight through Redestro's head, killing him instantly. As he then breaks the window of the top floor that they're at. And shoots his laser out through the window. Letting his black dragons know that they gotta get ready to fight. As the Liberation Army members won't expect it. And the black dragons would proceed to massacre most of them. This is when they would take almost the strong people and they would then look at the weaklings that are left as they say, you either join us or you die. As 20% of them would choose death over joining these bastards, as the rest of them not wanting to die would end up joining the black dragons. This would put the heroes in a horrible spot since Mirio's condition and Endeavor just being dead would have definitely messed them all up. Now we have Cabal reaching out to the heroes. Since he definitely would have been spying on the League of Villains as well as the Black Dragons, wondering how much stronger they've been getting. And sure enough, they've gotten way too strong for Cabal's team to handle them alone. As Cabal would decide to pull a very, very, very hard move. As he would reach out to the heroes, or All Might to be specific. As All Might then agrees to meet him at a certain location with Dobby, Toga, and Spinner, as well as Cabal present. And All Might would actually have a couple of heroes in the back as All Might's talking to Cabal. And right as he's about to plan a secret attack to take down the organization, Cabal then says, I'm not playing these games, All Might. Your heroes better not try to attack us or we'll slaughter them and we'll be even weaker to the new force. The Liberation, Black Dragons, as well as the League of Villains have all formed a sort of alliance. I can't take them out on my own, and that's why I need your help. As All Might would begin to bluff and say, we don't need you guys, we have it under control. As Toga would reveal herself and say, really? As she would turn into one of the pro heroes that was in one of the meetings where they had discussed that the Black Dragons had become way too huge. As she would show herself and reveal that it was not the real Midnight, it was Toga. As Toga would show her real colors and Alma would be surprised. As Cabal would then say, so All Might, are you going to listen to my offer or are you going to just have yourself get killed here and now? As All Might then looks at Cabal and says, damn it. As he then says, what are your demands? As Deku then says, I'm not talking about demands. I'm talking about taking out the Black Dragons. This is no longer a hero versus villains thing. This is about taking down the crooked cabal 
I have some personal business with him as well as the League of Villains. So this is actually going to be working in my favor as well as yours. I help you guys out and you guys help me out. How does that sound? Because all my things about it says very well. He then decides to talk to Nezu about it as Nezu decides to have a sort of meeting with Cabal where they discuss and create a very elaborate plan to take them down in the next couple of months. Now at this point we got Kano being put inside of the test tube by Dr. Ujiko with one for all deciding that he's going to go ahead and make Kano his successor now. During this time the heroes as well as the villain the HRS society would have decided that they're going to put them all to train. As Deku would decide to train all of the students with Spinner and Cabal, training these kids in a way that they've never been trained before. They would push them to the limits every day, knowing that they only have a couple of months to get ready for this war that's coming. Cabal can sense it. It's, it's strange. He can just feel that it's coming. As he would proceed to train all of the UA students, as well as tell the heroes that if they're not willing to die, they better not show up in the front lines. As some of the heroes would have backed out with most of the true ones showing their real colors with Cabal or Deku you could say respecting them a lot more for this all of the students would definitely have gotten a two times booster in their strength as well as their finesse and ability to fight definitely making them a force to be reckoned with and during this time Kano would be at about 60% in terms of his operation to make him strong the strongest you could say as Kano or <sighs> the doctor and all for one would proceed to be looking at what Kano's become at this point. At this point, Kano would be about 60% in completion. When the heroes at this point would be deciding that they're getting, they're gonna have their all out scale battle tomorrow. Yes, this time it's not only gonna be 70%, it's gonna be 60. I gotta lower that down because, truth be told, <laughs> if Kano would get the 100%, it'd be GG's for the heroes. <laughs> Anyways, now, we're going to go ahead and get into the plan. Plan being that the students will take the mid-battle, the heroes and the villains. I mean, the heroes would take the, the front line as well as the HRS or the hero reforming society in the front. With Zabi, Toga, Spinner, and Cabal with All Might. Hawks and some of the high tier heroes with Mirko being among them since you know we all like Mirko come on now now this is when some of the lesser known heroes would actually end up taking the back room knowing that if they stay in the front lines they'll only become a liability and die they're going to be more in charge of civilian evacuation as well as you know using themselves as a sort of backup for any time that some of the students or some of the lower heroes would need help they would have the entirety of class 1a and class 1b this time since both of them would actually be trained during this training arc that they had and definitely would be a force to be reckoned with and now we're gonna go ahead and get into the big stuff it would be at this time that we have a lot of fights ensuing since the hero society and the villain society would would he would proceed to meet up at the hospital since Deku would have had Toga do a little bit of a spying on the Black Dragon side turning into one of their higher up members with Deku and Dobby helping take him out with Toga taking his blood and just blending in you know she would have realized that Kano was she would have found out Kano's location and told it to them as the heroes would decide to launch their full scale attack things would go to canon with things being a tad bit different Deku's main team would end up helping Deku take out some of the high-end nobles with Toga's quirk actually being awakened during this time. She would actually end up taking on twice, killing him and taking his blood. A spinner would help against the fight with Magma, getting into a very, very difficult match where Spinner would end up being on top by just a little bit. In terms of the fight with Dobby and uh, Muscular, things would be very, very different. Dobby would rush in there and incinerate muscular as he has nothing against Dobby. Of course, he can increase his muscle mass, but what the hell are you going to do if you're going to get cremated? Now, this is when we have Deku's wiping out a majority of Kano's men using his super speed since at this point, 
They'll have about 50% of one for all speed, as long with, along with Plasma Blast that he uses to blast in, with, in conjunction with the super speed, just blitzing around, blasting as many people as possible. The students would definitely be taking on a lot of Kano's men, as well as a lot of the weaker League of Villains members, as we have Toga using Dobby's quirk, or no, Dobby's uh, clones, as well as twice his clones, to take out a lot of the nobles. That being said, we're going to go ahead and uh, get into what you guys have all been waiting for. We got the Kano and Cabal fight, what we've all been waiting for. Yep. Now, as soon as du as Kano's or as Kano's woken up, this is when um, Mirko would have actually ran in there to wake up Kano and break the tube that he was held in. As the doctor runs away, but right before he can escape, Deku would speed blitz him, killing him instantly. As he then looks at Cabal, who steps out and says, <laughs> I, <laughs> I see, mate. We're going to have a final dance. As Deku then looks at him and says, I've waited a long time for for this time to pay for what you did with Kano saying I only did what needed to be done mate as they would proceed to have an all-out battle with Deku blitzing straight at Kano as he begins to slash him with his hook swords going all out as Kano would regenerate almost instantly this is when Kano would smile and kick him away about five five blocks away as Kano would super speed back trying to fight him in hand to hand Kano and Cabal would be in in a very you know evenly matched battle as Cabal would proceed to rush at him and slash him with his hook swords going so fast before Kano could even regenerate with Kano trying to use his laser eye to get on top of Deku and using a couple of his newly established quirks he would get the amazing abilities of one for all having the black tendrils that all for one has the enhanced strength the the all of the abilities that all for one has is essentially what Kano would have as Deku and Kano would get into an immense battle Having a lot of the area around them get incinerated as Deku and K Kano, sorry, Kano would get into a very, very strong battle. This is when Deku would actually decide that enough is enough as he then is thrown to the ground by Kano as he then smiles and takes one of his hook swords and flips it in the air as he grabs it and says, <laughs> Funny man, I would have loved to have you on my side. It's because of you that we're here. As Deku would look at him and say, you're dead! As Kano would then smile as he picks up Cabal and grabs him by the throat and says, I would have loved to kill Stain instead of having the heroes and the gnomos do it. Sadly, I wasn't around at that time. As Cabal would just have a look in his eyes that he's never had before, as he then surpasses every limit that he's had it ever before. Proceeding to speed blitz Kano as he stabs his hook sword straight through Kano's head, stabbing straight through the brain, almost killing him, but his brain would start to low key regenerate. This is when Deku would break through any limit that he had before, and he would run at Kano, speed blitzing him and spinning him as he has his hook sword stabbed into Kano's brain. As he then stabs his hook into Kano's leg and begins to run at the, at the speed of light. No, 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 not even the speed of light. He would run at the speed of 200% of one for all as he begins to go off and run around the world. He takes Kano and drags him, incinerating his skin as his skin regenerates and comes back as Kano is just in awful pain. He can't react. It's moving way too fast. It was all in the second. As Deku then throws him across, as Deku then speed blitz in front of him and holds one of his hook swords out as Kano comes in flying straight forward and gets ripped in half. MK11 Fatality, baby. After this, Deku would walk up to Kano as he's, half of his bodies are laying on the floor. As Deku would look at him and say, Good riddance. As he smashes the brain before it can regenerate and then shoot a plasma blast at his body so there would be nothing left. This is when Deku would help take out the remaining threats and Cabal would take out a lot of nobles. After this, the cleanup would be a lot different. Deku would decide... To not fight against the heroes after this since he knows that they've been through a lot as well as he and his team have. So during this time, Deku's team decides to go to trial. Now they're held in trial and this is when Deku would uh, say that he's guilty of everything that they're charging against. him. As the higher ups of the government proceed to say stop, we need to talk to Cabal and his team. As Deku would look at them and say, what about... 
is they would tell him about a special covert ops force that he's going to be in command in, along with his crew. And his job is going to be to take out bad organizations, just like the League of Villains and Black Dragons, with them telling Deku that he's going to be allowed to kill anyone that he wants, with Deku just smiling, thinking that'll be perfect. This is when Deku would look at them as he says, I accept. As Deku's team members, that being Dobby, Spinner, and Toga, would accept willingly, with the government wiping their records clean, clean, sorry as well as wiping out any trace of anything that they had left on this world. Their records annihilated. Who they were before would be taken down, and Deku would have his own special covert ops force with his amazing team. And in terms of the ship, there'd be none. He wouldn't need nothing like that since he'd be too busy carrying out Stain's goals, but every once in a while, he'd definitely have his fun. That being said, boys, this is going to mark the ending of What If Deku Was Cabal. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to go down below and, uh, you know, leave a like for your boy. As well as uh, check out the Crown Clown's channel since he definitely makes amazing content. And it was his help that made me, you know, made me get a lot of the inspiration for the series. Me and him both worked on it. it took a little bit of a, t a little bit of time, but, <laughs> you know, I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. That being said, this has been Zether and the Crown Clown. And I'm out.